we're, we're going to do our best to be the best in the space. Um, but the space as a whole is going to have tremendous growth that all players within the space should, you know, be able to, to steal some of that, um, that pie growing. You know, it's not just about, it's not just a hundred million dollar market and, you know, we're, we're fighting over who gets that hundred million. It's, it's really like a massively growing space. Welcome to Steady Lads. In this episode, I'm interviewing a team member from Kineco. Kineco is a crypto gambling platform based on Solana. You don't often hear about these crypto gambling platforms because gambling is taboo. Uh, but platforms like Rollbit do around $50 million a month in revenue. That is higher than like 99% of crypto projects. So obviously, I was curious how they're doing this. Like, where's this revenue coming from? Um, what, what is going on with this sector? And, and what the future could potentially hold for the crypto gambling sector? This episode isn't sponsored. I didn't receive any perks or any sort of benefits to, to do this episode. And I'm not using any sort of affiliate links. I do, however, hold the KNK token, which is the token for Kaneko. If you're interested and curious about the crypto gambling space and you want to learn more about what the future might hold, this is a great episode to dive in and learn more. I guess to start us out, what is Kaneko? Or is that how you pronounce it, Kaneko? Kaneko, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what is Kaneko? Yeah. So Kaneko is a, a Solana-based casino and sports book. Um, it's been around for, for over a couple of years at this point. And, you know, Kaneko, the, the token itself is, um, you know, benefits from the success of, of the platform. But, you know, I think out there, you know, I encourage everyone to sort of go on the website and try it themselves because, you know, I'm convinced it's the best, you know, UI, UX out there. You know, I, I obviously gamble myself and, you know, I, I've tried the, the roll bits of the world, the stakes of the world, as well as, you know, the UK betting platforms and the US betting platforms. And I think of the crypto casinos and sports books out there, you know, Kaneko is, um, you know, the best UI, UX. And then again, like I said, the, the token basically benefits because a third of the platform profits are used to to buy back K and K on the open market, and ninety percent of that is burned, and ten percent of it is distributed to uh, to stakers. So, as far as like crypto gambling, like wh what makes it unique, um, or like wh why is why did you guys choose to build like a, a crypto gambling platform versus like just a normal one? <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, I think there's there's certain aspects that that people like of you know the the crypto side of it. I mean, you know, the anonymous side pe people obviously like. I mean, you can sign up with your Phantom wallet and you know that's it, or deposit your 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 crypto onto the website. And I, you know, I think a lot there's definitely a crossover between you know crypto and, and gambling. I think you've seen that with sort of the success that that Rollbit has had, you know, in, in the space as a whole. And I think gambling as a whole over the next few years, you know, has, has a ton of uh, white space to take. And I think, you know, the, the, the crypto side of it should grow, um, you know, even faster than the gambling space as a whole, largely because, you know, people don't want to be giving up all the information. They don't want to be getting tracked. I mean, you know, sign up for a DraftKings, you're going to get like letters through the mail. <laughs> I, I'm not sure people, people want that. So, you know, I think the, the, the anonymous side of crypto definitely, uh, crosses over with with the gambling aspect. Okay, so it's kind of like the ease of access on one hand, especially if you're like crypto native, you're already in the crypto space. It's really easy to just to get started using these platforms, and you don't have to you know go through like this whole sign up process. Um, but then the second part would be the the crypto space as a whole. There's just like a lot of wealth in it, and so it's almost like that's your customer base, um, and so you're differentiating differentiating yourself versus like the the draft bets and things like that by going to a different customer base who has all you know a lot of liquid wealth um and kind of setting up shop there would, would that be a good way to describe it exactly and, and the one other thing i'd say is you know you sort of you, you mentioned the liquid wealth but you know these are people with pretty large risk appetites right i mean we're all invested in crypto yeah. um you know this is sort of the more risk averse people the, the less risk averse people are, are invested in crypto so you know them you know, gambling is is um, you know they're sort of doing it with a large portion of their <laughs> of their net worth. You know, for some of these folks, um, so there's definitely a, a, a pretty big crossover. So, what would make you guys different than something like Rollbit? Because I mean, obviously, Rollbit's been pretty successful. They do something like, man, they they do something like fifty million dollars a month in revenue, which still blows my mind. I want to get into that a little bit later. But what would make you different than something like Rollbit? Yeah, I mean, look, I. Rollbit, I think, is a is a great platform, and I think a lot of the tailwinds we have, Rollbit also um, will experience. Um, you know, I would say what Rollbit has done well is, um, 
you know, they sort of went out pretty heavily with getting involved with some of the larger crypt- crypto influencers. Obviously, Gainsley was was a pretty big one for them, and you know, they had a lot of success with referral links. And you know, again, it's it's really the crypto Twitter influencers for the most part has sort of helped grow their user base. And they have some, you know, some some good ideas out there. You know, I think there's some things that set us apart. I think the tokenomics for for Kaneko are, are far superior to to a roll bit. But in terms of the actual platform itself, I think we have a better UI UX. Um, if you go to place a bet on both websites, you'll find, you know, it's quicker to do it via Kaneko than it is to do it via roll bit, which is one thing. You know, people don't want to see a, a rotating screen whilst they're trying to place a bet. They want to get on, place their bet, and then watch the game. That that's sort of the main the main thing we have, and our, our VIP reward system we have is is good, and um, we've obviously looked at all the competitors and and you know tried to make it a bit better than anybody else. We have a, a volume leaderboard, which you know again is is aimed at increasing volumes, and we're actually launching today a referral leaderboard. But the, the ref links themselves have a lot of uh, you know a lot of joy, but really just sort of incentivizing that by in addition to the regular. Uh, referral rewards that you'd get a, a roll bit. We're going to have a leaderboard and reward our, our our best, you know, sort of referrers. But again, it's for, for us now. We're really in the stage where we love where the platform is at. It's now just a case of onboarding as many users as as possible and increasing the volume, um, which obviously should flow down to profits, which will then you know increase the monthly buyback for KNK. And it's sort of a a flywheel at that point. KNK will start to go up. People invest in KNK. When you're invested in K and K, you're more incentivized to, um, you know, push friends and friends and such to to use the platform, and then you know from there, sort of it all um, should gain momentum pretty quickly. So you, you mentioned that you feel like K and K's tokenomics are better than Rollbits. How, how so? Yes, I mean we don't have an NFT. Um, the only thing we have is 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 the coin. Um, everyone is incentivized the same way. The team owns tokens. You know, th- th- they start vesting in about eighteen months, and they. Um, invest linearly over a two-year period, and um, we have this promise to deflation. So every every month we're going to be deflationary. So if in a certain month the buyback isn't sufficient, you know, for us to to vest those tokens, we won't we won't vest those tokens. Which means there'll never be a month where there'll be more K and K outstanding than the prior month. So I mean, we've bought back around thirty percent of the supply in the last fifteen months, and. And really, that's with minimal marketing of the, of the platform, which is kind of insane. We really started the marketing push early December. And, you know, these deals aren't particularly quick to come by. You know, we did our first AMA um, about 10 days ago, which is kind of insane. But we were really focused on, you know, you don't get too many chances to to get these customers. And maybe, if anything, we were you know, too critical of making sure the platform was perfect first. But now the platform, you know, we, we feel like is in a very good spot. We're obviously going to keep launching additional features, but now it's just a case of going, you know, ham on the marketing and attracting as many users to the site as we can. What What do you think it is that has given Rollbit like this massive amount of revenue, like $50 million a month in revenue is, ins- is crazy for anything in crypto. And I feel like uh, not a lot of people really talk about Rollbit, um, maybe because gambling is kind of like, sort of like a taboo thing. And so most people want to stay away from like talking about it on podcasts or whatever. But it's just so interesting to me that like, they are doing so much revenue. And it's almost confounding. Like, is anyone else in the space doing anything close to that? And, you know, what are your thoughts about it? Yeah, I mean, they've been hugely successful. The way they've ramped up has been great. And I mean, fair play to the team. They've had, you know, a couple of issues along the way. But I think they've done a great job, and you know, I mentioned the success they've had with with influencers and, and large crypto personalities. Um, you know, it, it's it's part of the the avenue for marketing that we're also pursuing, because I mean, the, these guys do have you know a large following, and the the following that they have is also you know, it it kind of leads itself perfectly, you know, to to crypto gambling online, right? So it is kind of perfect, and you know, that, that's essentially what we're doing. You, you'll, you'll see. You know, some guys on Twitter and, and Telegram, and you know, a lot of it is just their coin holders. You know, some of it, you know, they're getting slightly better economics than your, your regular ref link. But you know, we don't have to do a whole lot because at the end of the day, with the good platform, once they start, you know, posting the ref link, if, if the website sucked, it you know, wouldn't exactly be a big revenue maker for these guys. But when they go on Kaneko and they see the website's pretty good, they're then getting 
you know, for the life of that customer, they're getting a percentage of, of their bets. So for them, they're also incentivized. And, and that's the thing we've been really focused on is, is making sure everyone is aligned, right? Coin holders are aligned. You know, the, the, one of the issues we see with Rollbits tokenomics is if you stake your coins, you know, you're essentially entering the lottery, which means you're, you're going to have less Rollbit than you did the week before. Right, which if you're a long-term Rollbit holder, that shouldn't be the case, right? You shouldn't be, you know, foregoing some of your tokens in order to get a percentage of the profits. Um, so for us, like, you know, you stake, you stake the K and K. You're going to get a staking reward every day from the buyback. You're going to grow the amount of K and K you have, whilst at the same time the total supply of K and K is going to decline. So you, you're going to own more K and K of a, of a smaller total outstanding amount, which we think is, you know highly attractive to investors. So it will be interesting to see how once we get the marketing going and, you know, the monthly profits, you know, should increase, you know, the, the, the buybacks will, will increase and it'll be interesting to see the, the flywheel in full effect and hopefully this month, but, you know, we're, we're highly confident within the next few months, we'll see it really, really tick. So as far as like your average user, are they are they crypto are they using crypto to pay for this stuff or, or i know you guys have like a credit card option are they people from outside crypto what are you guys seeing and, and based off that what would you speculate the average user of something like rollbit would be yeah so it's it's 99.99 percent crypto users um there's very very few credit card deposits i mean the main reason for that is because we don't allow a bank transfer afterwards so if a non-crypto user were to deposit on the site it, you know it, how they would withdraw the money off would be they would have to basically get a, a cex anyway so you know i, I think for the most part it's 99.9 percent .9 crypto users and i think I, i'd imagine it's the same for, for rollbit as well what made you guys choose solana to build on yeah i mean part of it um, we actually migrate, we, we actually started off on Ethereum. We migrated over to Solana. You know, the, the, the gas fees around the time when we were using Ethereum, I mean, you know, your average gambler isn't always betting, you know, a thousand dollars here and five thousand dollars there. And if you want to place a twenty dollar bet and gas fees forty bucks, um, <laughs> you know, it's pretty tough. You got to win three bets just to get your gas fees back. So for us, you know, Solana obviously. Now it's you know the platform the the network's been great. It's obviously had some struggles um, with reliability you know a year ago or so, um, but where it is now you know with the price of um, transactions as low as it is, you know for, for anyone you know quickly depositing ten dollars, making a bet, withdrawing ten dollars, you know it's instant. You know if you were to do that with a regular betting platform, you know it's not the same, right? You're gonna it's it's like your deposit will hit instantly and then by the time you withdraw it it's like three to five days for it to hit your bank um this is pretty instant you can you know deposit the money place a live bet which is done in five minutes and then withdraw the money and you know within five minutes it's already back in your in your phantom wallet so you guys almost i i think rollbit started out on solana and maybe i'm wrong but i think it started out on solana and it migrated to ethereum is that right that's right yeah so so you guys did almost the opposite, and you guys did this before the the recent Solana run up. So you guys have been, you guys did it when like Solana was basically dead. Like nobody was building, on, you know. Well, nobody's really paying attention to Solana like they are now. You guys just shows, hey, we're gonna leave Ethereum and go to Solana. That's just like that's such an interesting choice. And, and yeah, so we did it before. We did it still whilst you know before the Solana dip. Um, you know, we did it back in I think it was twenty one. We did we did the migration. Um, oh, got it. The end of twenty one. And then, you know, we were getting a lot of pressure from investors, like, why don't we move over, um, you know, name a, name a chain that was getting, <laughs> we were getting told that was an absolute no-brainer to move to Arbitrum or whatever, whatever the chain was. Um, and we decided to stick with Solana. You know, I, I, again, I, I think it's sort of paid dividends now. You know, it, it, it's obviously a risk and you, it, it's very tough to predict where exactly it's going to go. I mean, Rollbit decided to move to Ethereum um, the same as Degods decided to move to Ethereum. And like it, it, it's very tough to predict where these things are going to go, but you know the, the low cost of transactions and the speed, and now the reliability is is back. Um, you know, I think pretty happy to um, that we decide to stick with Solana and you know any Solana maxis that are looking for for a place to bet. You know, it's one of the things we have is that we did stick by Solana the whole time. Yeah, you guys, and that's paying off now. So uh, congr <laughs> congratulations. How much how much of the platform is on chain? Like um, you keep mentioning, like 
bets, transit. Because I know, I feel, well, okay, I've never used Rollbit. I've never used actually any of the platforms. But um, I had always assumed that a lot of it was actually pretty centralized and just the token was, you know, on chain. How, how much of what you guys have built is is on chain versus centralized? Um, and just give me some insight into that. Yeah. So originally, actually, when we launched the project, the idea was to be fully um, decentralized option where, you know, I decide, you know, I'm going to put up some liquidity on this side of the event and, um, you know, you, you come in and you're like, well, actually, I want to be on the other side. And, you know, I, I've provided 5K of liquidity and you come in, you put 5K on. Um, and, and that way you can have, you know, extremely tight markets. And, and you know, it, it sounds great. Um, it, it's just unrealistic it, until you it, that the market is just not deep enough for that to happen. I'm sure it will get there at some point, but today, as, as we see it, it, it isn't. So you have some guys that have tried to do it, and you, you know you had a pretty big team um, behind one of these uh, decentralized options. And you know you go in for like a large Thursday night football game, and you know you're putting like 108 bucks of liquidity on each side. And someone comes in, they want about a thousand bucks. They can't, right? They capped at 108. So we are, in terms of the the market offerings, we're, we're, we're pretty centralized. And you know the advantage of that is you can go in, you can place you know five thousand bucks on on the Chiefs to win, or ten thousand bucks on the Ravens to win. Um, and until the market becomes deeper and the user base becomes broad enough to where you can have that offering on both sides, it's going to have to be decentralized. Um, and that's why you've seen sort of if you look at the revenues of Rollbit versus the revenues of you know any of these other guys that tried to do it decentralized um that's sort of the main reason for it got it guys so but that is something you guys are like hey uh in the future when that's an option that's something you're interested in oh definitely for sure um i mean i think it's it's an interesting way to play you just need you know far deeper um liquidity well uh as far as the k and k token you talked a little bit about how it works um i'm kind of interested in it from the viewpoint of well with rollbit too like just in general crypto gambling platforms you know normally when you're gambling um the house always wins right but you have this unique advantage in crypto gambling where you can not only play against the house but you can be the house with the token and so um you talked about the burn can you go into like specifics about like how the burn works yeah um so i mean i think that's exactly that's um you know the, the the perfect way to summarize it is you are the house um you know, everyone here owns owns the token, and you're in the same same spot. If we have a 300k profit month, just to keep the numbers easy, a third of that is is uh, loaded into the buyback wallet. She'll have a hundred thousand um, uh, dollars. We sort of vary every month, but every you know less than five minutes, there's a buy on Solana, which again we couldn't do on Ethereum. Um, so let's say every three minutes or so, there's a there's a K and K buy, and then you know we're buying over the course of the month and. At the end of the month, we usually do it on the fifth of the next month. We'll sort of, you know, post a monthly report with uh, revenue numbers for the for the prior month, how much K and K we were able to buy back, and then we'll post the the burn transaction as well. And then, in addition to that, if if you if you own the K and K token and and you stake it on the website, um, and, and we really do this just to incentivize, um, you know, sort of long term holders that aren't holding onto this, you know for a flip 10% of the buyback is is used to incentivize staking um so 90% is burnt 5% goes to K&K stakers and 5% goes to K&K LP stakers you know for the, the the liquidity side as well which um we were up to about 600k of of TVL today so you know they obviously benefit from from the trading volumes but also benefit from uh, the platform profits as well. Have you guys seen more revenue with the recent spike in like Solana price and just kind of that wealth effect kind of bleeding down? Yeah, so we, we have seen in December volumes were good. Um, it's it's sort of one of these things now we're launching a bunch of different things at the same time. It's hard to pinpoint exactly where it's coming from, but volumes definitely increased. We did launch a volume leaderboard in December. Um, I think it was around the 5th of December we launched it. And leaderboards and these kind of things are great because you know, we offered a ten thousand dollar prize um, for first place, five thousand dollar prize for second place, and on the last day of the month, it actually became kind of insane. Like going in, the deadline was midnight uh, European time, and there was about the guys in first and second basically did one hundred and fifty k of volume each in the past in, in the final hour to try and win. You know, the the final prize, um, and as the as the platform grows, those prizes will only grow. Right, we want we want to reward platform users the same way we want to reward token users. So, 
you know, as the platform grows and, and revenue increases, we want to, you know, make those prizes 100K and not 10K. But the nice thing today is, you know, before we have the, the massive spike in users that we're expecting, you know, for these guys to come in and, um, you know, have a real shot at winning, you know, 5K and 10K is pretty appealing to, to these bettors. Is there a place you can find revenues? Yeah, we post uh, a monthly report every, uh, every month. It's the fifth of, of the following month we post it. Um, and we just, they're all in our Discord and we tweet them all out as well. But there's a monthly reports section in our Discord as well. What's the revenues look like for like the latest one? So we're doing five-ish of, um, of revenues. And again, that, you know, that's sort of spiking. And in, in, in December, you know, there was an increase of over 100% from where we were in November. When you say five-ish, what do you mean by that? Uh, five million of, of total volume. Total volume. And how much of that is is actual revenue? Yeah, I mean... Well, you'll, you'll see on the fifth when we when we report it. I don't want to you know give it to you ahead of then, but you know sort of the the general house edge on these is is sort of a couple of percent. But you know sort of the way we think about it is it really is you know more users equals more volume, and then as you flow through, two um, percent is sort of a pretty good proxy. You're going to have variations mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, um, we've seen some you know ten thousand x winners. Um, you know, you're going to have large sports bets of, you know, 10K that may hit or may not hit. And um, we've had some horse racing bets that have paid out. You know, this is back back in the summer of last year. Someone placed a 10K sports bet, which went 240K. <laughs> so you're going to have the, the monthly fluctuations. But for the most part, the sort of way we're thinking about this is drive the users, drive the volume. And around 2% of that will be your so normalized profit. Got it. Two percent would be normalized profit. So what? Two percent. You said of um, about five million. What was two percent of that? That's like tw- oh, let's say a hundred thousand bucks. Hundred thousand. Okay, that's pretty good for it's you guys because you guys are small. Um, you guys are what's your market cap? It's like three million. It's about 11, 11 million bucks. Eleven million. Okay, okay. Um, so you guys market cap eleven million, doing about a hundred k a month of revenue. Um, but you're on Solana and Solana has been kind of dead for <laughs> a year and just recently saw a big uptick and so, saw some, uh, it's been seeing some big growth. So, um, that's a good yeah, and, and one thing I want to, want to highlight as well is, you know, sort of dis- November volume was like two and a half million or 2 million ish. So we're going from two to, to five. And a lot of that is, is the marketing efforts that we've just started. So the five is sort of where we're at on a monthly basis for December, but you know, not where we're looking to be. And, you know, as you get more K and K holders, which also ramped up over, over December, as we get the referral leaderboard, you know, that's literally launching today, um, you'll see users increase, which should see volumes increase. Um, so our goal isn't to be at, you know, 5 million volume for long, you know, it's to keep doubling volumes from where we are. So in your mind, like the biggest thing kind of holding you, so again, Rollbit, 50 million, but it's also a massive project. You guys are over here at um, doing about 5 million a month over this last month of volume, $100,000 in profit. What in your mind is the biggest thing holding you back? Is it that referral program, like just getting getting more you know, influencers talking about it or, or, or what is it's, it? It's the, it's the marketing push, which, which honestly is, is just, a massive array of things. One is is coin holders themselves. If, if you own K and K, you obviously want platform profits to be as high as possible. You're going to push people to do it. Another another part of it, like you mentioned, is the is the referral leaderboard. Um, another po- part of it is you know getting these deals done, these marketing deals with you know cr- crypto influencers and, and and large crypto followings. I mean, if you go on Twitter, you'll see some guys mentioning K and K. Um, some of it's organic, some of it, you know, we've spoken to them and we have deals and, you know, whether the deal is they get a higher percentage, um, for referrals than, you know, the, the typical ref program, um, whether it's, you know, sort of a a dollar amount, but those deals for us are are highly accretive because I mean, you're talking a hundred thousand plus followers of people who already have crypto. And if people uh, of those hundred thousand plus, there's going to be some people, one that want to invest in the coin who are then incentivized to push a platform and two people that just want to bet themselves and, and don't know of places and you know <clears throat> using a platform in crypt, crypto as a whole right you, you sort of always have this risk i mean if someone's going to deposit fifty thousand dollars on our website to, to play it's nice for them to have you know the, the comfort of knowing that the website is safe you're going to get your money back which 
you know, we were a three million dollar market cap coin before, so I'm sure people were a little skeptical. Now we have, you know, these large guys around us, you know, promoting the platform. Um, and then in addition, we're doing sort of the regular marketing. And, and one thing which we've really improved recently is, is tracking and, and ROI on sort of the marketing spend. Um, you know, we're doing banner ads. You'll see banner ads on SolScan, on uh, BSC Scan, you know, ran- random websites here and there. And we give everyone their own unique tracking link. Um, and the reason we do that is because it's then very easy to see how many users they're driving, you know, h- how much volume they're driving and, and seeing if it's if it's money that we should continue spending or if we should, you know, continue spending that money elsewhere. Um, and then the last thing we're doing is, which is one thing which is pretty unique to uh, sort of the gambling uh, industry is we're doing a bunch of affiliate marketing in uh, country by country specific affiliate marketing. Um, so the first country we've done is is Brazil um, and they have some pretty large um, affiliate websites over there. So if you're in Brazil and you type, you know, crypto sports book or crypto casino, historically we weren't showing up, right? So, <laughs> which is obviously not great. And I mean, a, a lot of times Rollbit isn't showing up either and they've been able to get to, to, you know, the volumes they've been able to get to, but sort of then spending the time to, you know, be with these, you know, with these websites so, so they know we're legit, you know, they, they, they write a little review about Kaneko and they also then will get, um, you know, a higher percentage rev share than your typical ref link, but they're driving a decent amount of users to the website. So those deals for us, again, you know, we'd rather give out 20%, 25% of our um, revenue and, 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 you know, and then drive a million of revenue than get, you know, 100% of zero, right? Which is, <laughs> which is kind of where we were before. So those deals are, are again, highly accretive to us. And just to be clear, because you mentioned influencers getting paid and referral links, I'm not getting any perks. I'm not getting paid to do this. I don't have any referral links I'm using. I'm literally just doing this because I'm interested. I, I do hold the token. I do hold the KNK token. Uh, so I'm doing this because I'm interested in for my own research about KNK. But I'm also doing this because I'm really interested in crypto gambling platforms. And as you know, people may have noticed, I'm really intrigued by the fact that there's a crypto gambling platform, Rollbit, that has $50 million a month in revenue, which eclipses like 99% of all crypto revenues out there. And so I'm trying to get some insight with, with a smaller platform like Kaneko on like where this is coming from, how this all works, um, because obviously there's something here and obviously there's some sort of product market fit. That's a lot of revenue. And so, um, it, you know, and, and Connect is really interesting with uh, Solana and uh, that kind of narrative taking off. I think it's an interesting uh, insight into this this whole world. So I just kind of want to get that out of there because you're mentioning that and everyone always thinks that everything that I'm doing is paid. I don't do anything paid. So um, can you talk a little bit back about the staking? I, you know, I've tried to stake. As as a K and K token holder, and I cannot figure out where, where to stake. Where do you stake at? Yeah, it's a good question, and we're actually putting together because we we get this question all the time. Um, and essentially, the main reason, the the, the main stumbling block people have is um, you have to deposit the coins onto the website. You can't directly stake with the Phantom Wallet. So if you go to your profile, which is the little man in the top right, uh, you click him. And you go down to, to st- there's an option there for staking, but you have to deposit the KNK onto the website first. Otherwise, when you connect the Phantom Wallet, it will essentially say you don't have any Kaneko, um, which people then normally panic and instantly hit up Kaneko support, um, which is normally a pretty quick fix. You just tell them they have to deposit the KNK onto the site first. Got it. Got it. What are you, what like, as far as plans for the future, what are you most excited about with Kaneko? Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's a lot coming. Um, you know, one of the things which I'm pretty excited about, first of all, the leaderboard, um, the volume leaderboard, it sounds so simple. The psychology that it has on increasing volumes is like, it cannot be understated. Um, and you saw that with a double in volumes in uh, in December. And, you know, January is off to, off to a good start from, volume, from a volume perspective as well. We're hoping the same will happen with the referral leaderboard, which um, launches later today. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, as, as a K and K holder, you know, you're going to get your sort of regular benefits of, like I mentioned, it's highly deflationary. You're going to get your staking rewards, and there's going to be fewer K and K outstanding a month from now than there is today, right? Like that alone is is great, and you know, a reason why most people hold the token. The other thing which we're going to launch this month um, is essentially uh, on-site benefits for K and K holders. 
Today, if you're, if you're a gambler on the website, there's no real advantage in holding K and K unless you're losing. And then, you know, you're essentially the house, you get that benefit. We're still working on the ultimate rewards that we're going to do. But, you know, why do K and K holders not get free spins every month? Why don't they get, you know, increased rake, rake back by, by holding the token? You know, why don't they get some profit boost tokens? Um, and again, all these will obviously scale up with the more tokens you hold. Because really, we want to, we want to keep this where, you know, platform users are incentivized to hold K&K, and K&K holders are incentivized to, to push the platform. So you really have this ecosystem where um, strength in one is driving strength in the other, and then they can just keep playing off each other. And I mean, that's how you've seen Rollbit scale to the size they have. And, and you know, we're hoping to, to take advantage of the same. And we're highly confident we can. So kind of on a different note and kind of outside of your role at Kineco, I'm just curious as somebody who's in the space, who's heavily involved on Solana, outside of Kineco, what, what tokens or what projects interest you the most? Yeah, um, it's a great question. Um, you know, I, I own a few um, SMBs um, and some other uh, Solana NFTs. I'm actually, for the most part, largely just invested i own some ethereum but for the most part i'm largely just invested in solana and and a bunch of different solana projects you know rollbit i owned some of um largely because i see the amount of traction that that is going to flow into this space you know it's 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 massive like i know we think 50 million you know is is a lot for rollbit and um, you know, they drive a lot through the, the crypto uh, futures trading platform, which, you know, from a legality perspective, we really don't like for us, it's, it would be extremely easy for us to launch that platform. We really don't want to go there because, you know, we want to make sure we're 100% compliant with our license. Um, and that sort of maybe is slightly in, in the gray area. So for us, we're going to focus on being, you know, the most profitable and the biggest sports book and casino we can be. But we see how much is, is flowing into the space and how much momentum is in the space. And for us, like, that, that, I mean, that's why I owned, <laughs> that's why I owned Rollbit too. It's because I, I see how much is coming in. It's not just Kaneko, right? We're, we're going to do our best to be the best in the space. Um, but the space as a whole is going to have tremendous growth. The all players within the space should, you know, be able to, to steal some of that, um, that pie growing. You know, it's not just about, it's not just a, a hundred million dollar market and you know we're, we're fighting over who gets that hundred million it's it's really like a massively growing space so it'll definitely be interesting over the next few years and apart from that just a few sort of smaller smaller solana projects here and there so you said uh, you know rollbit's 50 million today but you see things going way bigger in the future how big do you see things going i mean it, it sort of take take your you know, and they they obviously have some sort of paid <laughs> paid uh twitter guys that are putting out research reports and sort of, sort of research reports is the wrong word but you know sort of estimates on, on how fast the space is going to grow but you know you're in sort of the high single digits in terms of um of annual growth which, you know, for the smaller guys, you know, we, we should be experiencing, you know, vastly higher than that. Um, but yeah, I think as, as a whole, you know, you have sort of the, the online gambling industry is going to grow rapidly. And then within that, you have the crypto gambling, which is going to grow even faster. And then within that, you have, you know, the smaller guys like us um, that you know, should grow exponentially from where we are today. Yeah, today today you'd say like Rollbit's sort of like the the Bitcoin or the Ethereum of crypto gambling tokens, and then Kineco is maybe the the up and coming Solana or something like that. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. I mean, they do have some good some good features. I mean, you know, I, I don't sit here and bash Rollbit. I think what they've done has been has been great. I mean, they launched um, you know the Dual Arena, which unfortunately has been heavily <laughs> taken over by bots. I don't know if you ever tried to use it, but you know they have some good ideas and some creative ideas. And I think we do too. And we don't want to sit here and just copy Rollbit. Um, you know, I mentioned our tokenomics, which I think are you know, clearly superior to theirs. Um, you know, we only have a token. Adding the, the on-site rewards for the K&K holders will, will help as well. It just, you know, adds additional utility um, and honestly increases the buyer base to any platform users as well. But, you know, I think what they, some of the stuff they've done has been great. And I think as you as you see sort of the next three months unfold for Kaneko, I think you'll see a bunch of exciting stuff roll out as well. Do you think it's possible that one day 
in the next, like, let's say five to 10 years, we'll see a crypto gambling platform do over a billion dollars in revenue a month. A billion a month is going to be tough, right? Then you're at 12. Um, I'm curious, actually, what DraftKings is public, yeah. right? Um, I mean, DraftKings, again, you, you have to factor in is, is only a U.S. Um, company. Um, so, you know, really, you, you can be big in this. I'll just pull up the latest, mainly because I'm curious. Um, the last quarter from DraftKings, $790 million. 790 million per quarter. So that's what, man, that's roll bits get, that's crazy. Okay. So they're doing 790. So DraftKings is like the biggest in the world, I'm guessing. No, no. I mean, they're the biggest in the U.S. I mean, they're doing 260 ish of, um, of monthly revenue. Got it. 260. Okay. So it's like, um, I, I guess you, do you see crypto gambling getting there? 260 million monthly revenue? Cause you're, you're like you said, that's a DraftKings, uh, is a U.S. based. And, um, you know, you guys operate on a global market. Exactly. Um, you have the global market. The, you know, there's a bunch of benefits to, to using crypto. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't see any reason why um, why they can't get to 260. And, um, you know, I, I think whilst they have a head start on us today, um, you know, we, we have a great team at Kaneko. And, um, you know, the, the devs we have, I'm highly confident in and, you know, the team keeps ramping up whilst they have a head start today. I'd like to see us close the gap uh, from a revenue perspective um, over the course of 24. Well, I kind of like your attitude because uh, you seem like a humble guy. And I feel like humility is often like a trait you want to look for in a, in a team uh, because those are the builders. And arrogance are the guys that think that they don't need to build and they're already good. So, um... <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we know we need to build, that's for sure. <laughs> and and to, until we're ahead of them, we need to keep building. Um, and it's good for us. I mean, we look at them every day as, you know, someone that, you know, well, well, there's no reason why we can't be where they are. Um, we're not today and, you know, we need to change that. In your opinion, why, why do more people not pay attention to the, the crypto gambling space? Why is that kind of like, on, at least on crypto Twitter and, and a lot of these podcasts, it doesn't seem to be like a very popular topic. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I think a portion of it, you mentioned it before, but, you know, you have you know, to take a big guy in the Solana space who I've spoken to numerous times in uh, Sol Big Brain, right? He, he's just never going to get involved in, in a gambling project. Um you know, it's just from a moral perspective, some people don't want to. Um, but I mean, in, in the investing space, we have these sort of ESG things all the time, right? I mean, people invest, people have invested in coal, right? <laughs> people still invest in coal, right? People invest in, um, you know, tobacco companies, British, British, Ameri like name a tobacco company, people invest in them, right? Um, you know, it, some people may not want to, and you know, there's obviously large uh, pension funds, for example, that don't want to invest in in oil companies or, or coal companies. But at the end of the day, um, they do exist, and um, you know, they generate a decent amount of revenue. And you know, you look at where Robert is today; it's going to be highly deflationary for the next year, and and we're going to be highly deflationary. I mean, thirty percent in fifteen months is kind of unheard of. Um, in addition to getting the staking rewards, so if you just think of that over sort of you know. 20% plus with any reasonable assumptions, it's going to be 20% plus deflation over the next year. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty, and that's with no revenue growth whatsoever. It's going to be pretty tough to, to compete with that in, in sort of other areas where you're not necessarily generating, generating revenue. Like we, we look at some of these meme coins that, you know, go to 250 million <laughs> market cap and, you know, I'm I'm from a TradFi background. I, I just cannot get my head around them, right? Like, I sit here and I'm like, I don't understand. Like, what, what, why is this worth 150 million or 250 million, right? Or or 50 million or worthless, right? All those numbers. You know, I I have equal rationale for any of those numbers. I mean, the only one that actually makes sense would be would be zero. <laughs> um, but you know, and and I mean, the, the tokenomics are terrible for all of them. They just keep issuing tokens. The team owns a ton. They're not vesting. They can just sell them whenever. Like there's there's a bunch of red flags, and you know I see us like a proper platform which is going to continue generating revenue. Um, and I mean, if we want like the amount of bids that we've received for someone to just come in and buy the platform and operate it themselves, you know, north of where the market cap is today, is absurd, right? Someone wants to come in, own the website, yeah. and just <laughs> take it and run with it. Um, now we'd obviously not monetize it that way, 
um, all the large investors in this, are, um, you know, we have a pretty good dialogue with them and, you know, everyone believes this should be a hundred million dollar plus market cap. Um, it's just about growing the user base. Um, but, you know, the platform itself, which is really what you're investing in, you know, we think the platform is better than um, Rollbit and other competitors. It's just literally, it's it's hard for us to say we should be where Rollbit is because their profit is is why they're trading where they are. But, you know, the option value of us getting there, you know, if, it, if it's an 800 million market cap for Rollbit, you're sitting here today and we're at 12, right? It's, it's not very hard to see us getting to 50 to 100 million near term. Um, you know, I think we had a, a little bit of a run up. I mean, most people, when we tell them about Koneko, have never heard of it, right? They're like, K and, what's K and K? Uh, it's like a little educational. And like, well, hold on a second. Why are you only trading at 10 million market cap? That doesn't make any sense. A dog with a hat is trading at 250. <laughs> you know, re- regarding the gambling thing, I've heard it explained uh, in a way that I really kind of resonated with me. Um, and that's that, uh, you know, you look at like the younger generations, look at the older generations and, and they could essentially like they go to college they get a job they have a career they could buy a house they could have a boat they can go vacation a couple times a year and they're, they're set they don't have to do anything else and that worked for a while um but the more that like we've had this sort of monetary debasement and the things have just getting out of gotten out of whack these younger generations like my generation we, we can't do that you you can't, you can't just go get a job and like most people can't afford a house like with a normal job that's just like so far out of reach and it's becoming more and more out of reach to the point that like my generation and below they don't look at normal options as a way to actually get where they want to go they look in in a lot of ways to things like gambling right so like investing in really risky um investments um doing things that they they know can get them like in one shot to where they want to go because they don't really feel like they have many other options and so that's been like you know why are meme coins taking off um why is even crypto so popular a lot of it uh, can be traced back to this idea that like when you don't have any other options to to get where you want to get in life what are what do people do? And that's that they, they they seek out the higher risk options that maybe can get them there. And so, um, you know, maybe that's part of the explanation on why meme coins have taken off. And maybe that is an argument for you know, if we believe that the monetary um, you know debasement is going to keep going on, maybe that is an argument for platforms like Kaneko. Um, and that is kind of sad in some ways that like you know people feel like they have to gamble to get where they're going, um, and you know. There should be other options, um, but if you see that trend continuing to grow, um, then that might be an argument for some of these platforms like Kaneko, Rollbit, etc. As you know, more and more people turn to these things um, to, tr- to try to get where, where they want to go. Yeah, I think that's definitely a portion of it. I mean, we have responsible gambling, and you know, we have cool down periods for people that want it. You know, we close down accounts for for gambling issues all the time. Um, but you know, a, a large portion of it is is entertainment as well, right? I mean, you're you're watching these games, and you know, if you're, if you're watching a football game on TV, why not make it fun between two teams I don't care about? Throw, you know, twenty dollars or fifty dollars, whatever the amount is, and and you know what? All of a sudden, you're a pretty diehard Packers fan, right? And so, um, so it does. I mean, it definitely makes it more interesting. And you know, if you're watching it at a bar and you're going to spend fifty dollars on drinks anyway, you know, it's a hell of a lot more entertaining when. When you have a dog to root for yeah i think as as far as gambling goes um there there is like there's definitely those people that do it for entertainment and they're pretty controlled and they have fun with it i think there obviously is those people that that do it uncontrollably but i also think at the end of the day like if you're looking at if you're in a free country right and you have free you should have the freedom as an adult to spend the money that you make in any way you see fit if you want to throw it off of a cliff you shouldn't be allowed to do that because you're the one that put in the hard work to earn that money. The government shouldn't come in and say, hey, you can do this or this with it. Um, you should have the right to do what you want. And if you look at gambling today or look at like um, Las Vegas or whatever, like the, the odds are heavily stacked against you. There's no transparency. Crypto offers the ability for transparency to, to be able to say, hey, provably the odds are X and you can see that we're not cheating and we're, you know, you're not being cheated by this platform. But also it has the ability, like we mentioned earlier, for you to be the house. So not only... Can you gamble, but you can you can benefit from other people that are doing the gambling. So, you know, whether you agree or disagree with gambling aside, if you look at what crypto gambling is offering, it is a vast improvement over traditional gambling. And so, uh, you know, if you believe in freedom, you believe people should be able to do what they want with their money. And if you 
you know, look at history. People have been gambling for all of time, you know, for all time, uh, since the beginning of time. Uh, they're going to probably keep doing it for a long time. Well, this is an improvement that does better people in that sector. Um, and, you, you know, uh, I believe that's one of the superpowers of crypto is, is it there's a lot of area for improvement and there's a lot of area for things like transparency and just giving back to the people who, who typically couldn't get into these things. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think you put that very well. How long have you been in crypto? Um, so I actually, for the most part, I mean, I, I basically got in the first bull run. Um, I paper handed out, you know, lost, I don't know, to make up a number, 70%, let's say. And then I got back in in uh, in 2020 when uh, you know I started taking a look at a few of these projects and you know noticed that we'd come a long way since the you know, the first time which I'm sort of blanking on my dates was that 2017 ish um, the first sort of big bull run well I mean there was a bull run in like 2013 but like the first kind of like big I think where it caught everyone's attention was yeah 2017 is it 27 December 17. Um, yeah. So, and then, you know, sort of did, did a bunch of work on different projects and, you know, have kept some of those investments, but, you know, won them. And the largest one, you know, I sort of treated it more like a TradFi investment. Um, you know, I wanted to do a bunch of work and, and have a few sort of high conviction, high conviction bets. And, um, you know, one of them was, one of them was Solana, which <laughs> is now sort of doing okay again. Obviously had a little rough, rough period there. Um, and then one of them was obviously, was obviously Kaneko, which, um, you know, I've now ended up on the team and, you know, the team has continued to grow and um, it's one, you know, it's, it's you know, it, it's one that, you know, I think is, is extremely interesting and and hopefully you guys do as well. La then, then last question, just seeing that you've had a little bit of time <clears throat> around uh, around the space in your view, this is, has nothing to do with Kaneko, but in, in your view, where do you think the crypto market goes over the next two years from here? It's tough, right? I mean, you've seen even... As recently as I think it was, it came into effect on the first of Jan. But you know, if you receive over 10k, right, you have to report it within 15 days to the IRS. And like, it's sort of similar to what what you said before. And you know, the governments basically want to be able to control everything, um, and it's just not realistic. Um, and sort of the the harder they push, so sort of the more resistance they're going to get from from crypto markets. And it's sort of the reason crypto is around in the first place. Um, and they're never going to have that level of control, right? It's, it's just going to be very tough. Um, because, I mean, you're going to see more and more applications where you don't need to convert to fiat. You know, the likes of Kaneko, right? It, 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 or, or Rollbit or any sort of crypto um, gambling platform, right? If you own a bunch of crypto, you don't want to have to convert this, you know, and put it into your bank and then bet on DraftKings or on Caesars. Or if you're in the UK, bet 365. Um, pe pe people don't want that. Um, so I think you're going to continue to see more applications where people don't have to convert back and forth. And, you know, I think the people that, that want to be in crypto and that have a lot of liquid wealth in crypto are going to want to, you know, use it. Um, uh, so I definitely think there's a, you know, there's definitely a need for it, but I think it will continue to be around, you know, which projects do well and, and which don't, I think is going to sort of vary with the direction of the wind every day. I mean, one day Ethereum is the hottest thing and like you need to be on Ethereum and Ethereum's the, the best network, et cetera. And, you know, the next day Solana's back again. And then, you know, Sam decides he wants to do something crazy and like Solana, you should never invest in again. And, you know, I, I do think something needs to be done about the regulation and I'm sure something will get done. But I just think if, if they go too overboard, it will essentially be, be moot. So I think it'll be fascinating over the next, you know, couple of years to see how it all plays out. I think the ETF is definitely coming as well. I think we all think that, but I think the ETF is imminent. Yeah, I know. I I don't know what happened with the the dip today. Um, maybe people getting spooked that maybe it won't come through. Um, but yeah, I think so too. I wouldn't see at, at this point. It seems to be consensus that it's going through. I think it would be the biggest shock ever. If the ETF got denied at this point, I think we'd see some pretty crazy lawsuits uh, going on against the SEC at that point, because there is no reason to deny it at this point. Exactly. Couldn't agree anymore. Well, as always, none of this was investment advice. Uh, crypto is risky. K&K &K is risky. 
I am a holder of KNK, as I mentioned earlier in the episode. And uh, again, I, I didn't get paid for this. I not I don't have any sort of affiliate links. I, there's no any like weird perks behind the scenes. This is all just me being interested and curious about what's going on in the space and the different sectors in the space. It has been great talking to you. I, I didn't even ask your, your name. Is it? Uh, are you just going by your username? It's Josh. Josh. Well. <laughs> Sorry for asking your name at the very end. It's been great um, talking to you, Josh. And it, how can people, like, I guess, follow along with what's going on at Kaneko? Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we have a Twitter, which is uh, Kaneko Bet, and we have a Discord, which is, you know, pretty active. And, and, and the activity there has picked up as uh, sort of the tokens become more topical. So I always recommend people jump in the Discord and, and fire any questions you have in there. <laughs>